This is Jeremy Hammond, and today he was sentenced to 10 years in jail, the maximum sentence that he could have been given after he entered into a plea bargain. So why is he being thrown in jail? Well, he's a hacker, a computer programmer, and an activist. <laughs> To many people, he's a whistleblowing hero. There was a campaign to have him freed and today the courtroom was packed with his supporters. But the prosecution in his case called him a computer hacking recidivist. They accused him of threatening public safety and the safety of law enforcement officers. It's one of those things that I never really understood. Why is it that the safety of law enforcement officers is considered separate from the safety of the public? It's a really weird us and them thing, but that's a different matter entirely. In March 2012, Jeremy Hammond was arrested at home in Chicago and charged under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. That's the same law that was used to chase after the Reddit founder, Aaron Swartz. Hammond hacked into the servers of Strategic Forecasting, who are better known as Stratfor, an intelligence firm. He deleted a load of files and stole five million emails before passing them on to WikiLeaks. Those documents contain tens of thousands of credit card details which related to Stratfor, and Hammond then urged a load of Anons to start racking up charges on the credit cards, not for personal gain, but to donate money to non-profit organizations. In total, they managed to put $700,000 on the cards. Hammond then told the Anons that he wanted to cause the company to collapse, to be pushed into bankruptcy. But focusing on the credit card details as the justice system appears to want people to do ignores all the other more useful revelations that Hammond's hack uncovered. Now if any of this sounds familiar, that might be because of Barrett Brown, the journalist who's facing more than 100 years in jail, basically for copying and pasting a link to the documents that Hammond leaked. Now the reason Hammond got caught out was because he got done over by a former friend, Hector Monsegur, also known as Cebu. Cebu was a prominent figure in Lulzsec, but was tracked down by the FBI and started ratting on the people that he'd hacked with. The FBI also used Cebu to encourage hackers to infiltrate the servers of government targets, using his network to commit what would otherwise be considered crimes in order to access information. The US government has said this about Hammond, that he was motivated by a malicious and callous contempt for those with whom he disagreed, particularly anyone remotely related to law enforcement, not a concern with both transparency and privacy. Funnily enough, that statement's pretty much exactly what Hammond predicted back in August when he wrote this in a statement. They, the US government, condemn hackers and leakers when the NSA, CIA and FBI illegally spy on everybody and wage cyber espionage through viruses and hacking for foreign government systems. Now Hammond does have previous convictions for hacking. He got two years for breaking into a right-wing website. But the thing is, he's never made personal gains from his hacks. They've always been based in his liberal activism and that has won him a load of famous supporters. Richard Stallman called Hammond a fine example of a socially responsible hacker. Birgitta John Stotter said that in Iceland, his actions would have been considered an act of bravery. And Chris Hedges said this, the security and surveillance state is creating a hermetically closed system of power. It's doing this by rewriting laws to subvert the constitution and to grant itself the ability to criminalize all forms of dissent. So what do you think? Is Jeremy Hammond a computer hacking recidivist or a brave, socially responsible hacker? Let us know.